Okay guys, on this part of the video we're going to go over solving log and exponential equations. So, um, in, in multiple problems there are various ways to work them, so I'm going to show you um, a couple different ways uh, depending on the problem, but uh, for some of these it, there's always going to be a best method. And when I look at something like this, when they're both being raised to a power, two, two different um, bases being raised to a power, the easiest way is, is to try and rewrite them as both powers or the both powers of the same base. So when I think about 9 and 81, I notice that they're both powers of 9 and they're both powers of 3, and either one would actually work. If I leave it as 9 to the negative 3x, and I think of 81 as 9 squared, well, I need this to be up here and no longer in the denominator. So you just change that to a negative 2. So this is all 9 to the negative 2, and that's being raised to the negative 2x minus 3. But if in equation, You've got 9 to this equals 9 to that. Well, the only way that's true is if this equals that, meaning you don't need the 9s anymore. So you're just trying to solve when does negative 3x equal this right here. Now, when you raise a power, when you have this, x squared to the third, that actually means x squared times x squared times x squared. When you raise it to the third, it means you cube it, right? Well, that actually means that there's how many x's? There are 6, and you get that from multiplying, okay? You add when you multiply like this, but when you raise the power and then you have another power to the expression, then you just multiply the powers. Okay, so I'm going to multiply negative 2 times negative 2x minus 3, so I'm going to distribute the negative 2, and you've got 4x, and then you've got positive 6. So you want to solve for x, so let's get the x's on the same side, let's subtract 4x from both sides, and you're left with negative 7x equals 6. You want to divide by negative 7 to solve for x, and when you do, you get the answer is x equals a negative 6 sevenths. Now you can put negative with the 6, you can put negative in the front, but don't leave it in the denominator, okay? Um, this is an exponential equation, and we don't have any problems with solutions, they're not any extraneous solutions, so there you go, okay? On 32. Um, again, 216 and 36, they're both powers of the same base. And I'm going to get a power chart over here. So you look at your power chart and you look for 216 and 36, and 216 and 36 are both powers of 6. So this is the same thing as saying 6 cubed to the negative 2n. And again, this is 6 squared, but i got to bring it up to the top. So it's 6 to the negative 2 to the 3 minus n. The bases are the same, so I don't have to deal with them anymore. So I'm really just dealing with this equation. That, which is negative 6n, because we multiply, equals this, which we're going to distribute and say negative 6 plus 2n. Again, we want to get variables on the same side. So I'm going to subtract 2n from both sides, and you end up with negative 8n equals a negative 6. You need to solve for n, so we divide by the negative 8. And when you divide by negative 8, you get a positive 3 fourths. 6 to 8 simplifies to 3 fourths, so there's my answer. Okay? Alright, on um, number 33, 2, 16, and 36 show up again, so we'll go ahead and use those powers that we just used. 2, 16 is 6 cubed, so 6 cubed the 3 in, and 36 is 6 squared, so the 6's don't matter anymore, and I'm left with 3 times 3 in, which is 9 in, equals 2, divide by the 9, and n equals 2 nines. Okay? Like I said, if you've got two different expressions, now, that being said, this one right here did not have a, a variable in the power. This one had a variable in the power, that one as well, this one and this one. This one only had one term as a variable in the power. So you could have done this, and this would have been valid. If you've got an exponential with only one variable in, in, one of the, um, in the power of one of the expressions, you can convert it to a log. Log base 216 of 36 equals 3n. And then just, you want to solve for n, so divide by 3. Now, as far as solutions, 2 ninths is prettier, but they are in fact equivalent, and it's not like I could say that that's wrong. 
because it's correct. Okay? And you wouldn't have to simplify it. On 64 to the 2n equals 16 to the 3n, I know that 64 and 16 are both powers of 4 and 2. So um, 64 and 16, yeah. 64 is 2 to the 6 and 16 is 2 to the 4th, whereas 64 is 4 cubed and 16 is 4 squared. It really doesn't matter which one you use because they're going to give you the same answer. So I'll go ahead and use 4. 64 is 4 cubed to the 2n. And 16 is 4 squared to the 3n. The bases are the same, so I don't need them anymore. So we've got 6n equals 6n. Now that right there is, is pretty much enough to tell you what the answer is, but we'll go ahead and, and simplify. If I subtract 6n from both sides, I'm left with 0 equals 0, which is a true statement. And when you get a true statement, that actually means they're infinite solutions, okay? And you could say, and you could actually write it out if you wanted to. Infinitely many solutions, or infinite solutions. Okay. Um, now, when you get to problems like this, and, and what I'm doing is ignoring the round to your answer, to your answer to the nearest thousands, because um, what I'm not going to do is give you a calculator. And what I am going to do is expect um, you to, to, to still solve the problem, which means you need to be able to leave it in a certain expression. So when you look at 35, you could attempt 35 uh, as we did the ones above, but you cannot rewrite 61 as a power of 5. So you have no choice but to use the logs. So if we rewrite this as a log, and I also want to say this, if I have 5 to the negative n equals 61, what you could actually do is just like when you have an e and you, and you throw a natural log in front of both sides, you could just throw a log base 5 in front of both sides. Let's cancel each other out and you're left with negative n equals log base 5 of 61, which is what we get right here when we convert to a log. Log base, base of the exponent, is 5. Can't be negative n, so 61 equals negative n. And you see how we end up with the same expression, same equation? So it's just a different way of thinking about it, but getting to the same thing. Okay. So I need to solve for n, which means I need to get rid of the negative, so I divide by the negative 1, which really just changes the sign. So n equals a negative log base 5 of 61. No simplification necessary and no, um, or possible. And, and you don't have to type it in. Okay. On number 36, we've got e to the n minus 9 equals 66. So when I think about e, I know that the inverse of e is um, log base e, and log base e is natural log, okay? If I have log base e of e to the n minus 9, I know that those cancel each other out, and I'm left with n minus 9. But m um, log base e is written as ln, so we just always write ln, okay? So ln is an operation, kind of like a square root. You have to take it of the whole side. So I take the natural log of this side, and I take the natural log of the 66. The natural log and the e cancel each other out, and I'm left with n minus 9 equals the natural log of 66. I want to solve for n, so I'm going to add the 9 over. And when you add the 9 over, here's what you can't do. You can't add it to that 66, because this is inside the logarithm, okay? You can write your answer is natural log of 66 plus 9. That's fine. Convention says that if there are not parentheses, then the log applies only to the term directly to the right of it. Okay? You could also write natural log of 66 plus 9. It's a little bit more clear, but it's the same answer. But what you can't do is natural log of 75. Okay? This is inside the log. That's not. So that's definitely wrong. Either one of these is just fine. You know, but you could also do this. 9 plus the natural log of 66, so you don't have to worry about that, but that didn't really matter. Okay. On uh, number 37, we've got 10 to the x minus 6 equals 7. I want to undo the exponent because the power is up in the exponent. You cannot just divide out a 10. 10 is being raised to a power, so don't try and do that. But what I can do is convert it to a log. 
or just take the log base 10 of both sides. Log base 10, that's the base of the exponent, of 7 equals x minus 6. We're trying to solve for x, so we just add the 6 over, and we're done. Log base 10 of 7 plus 6 equals x. You could write it as log of 7 plus 6. doesn't really matter. What you can't write is log of 13. Okay? So this is fine. This is fine. Whichever one. Okay. On 38, um, something to keep in mind. I have some people that might try to take a natural log of both sides right now, and while it is true we are going to use natural log to get rid of the e, to undo the operation of e, you cannot do that until you have the exponential alone, which means I've got to get rid of this negative. And, and dividing by a negative just changes the signs. So e to the 8b equals now a positive 20. And in order to get rid of the e, like we said, the, un the inverse operation of the e is the natural log. Those cancel each other out. So I've got 8b equals the natural log of 20. And in order to undo the multiplication of 8, I divide by 8. Now, you can say b equals the natural log of 20 divided by 8. You can say b equals 1 eighth the natural log of 20. Dividing by 8, same thing as multiplying by 1 eighth. You can say b equals natural log of 20 to the 1 eighth or natural log of the eighth root of 20. What you cannot say is b equals the natural log of 20 divided by 8. 8 is not inside the logarithm, so that's a no. Okay? But any of those would be correct. What do I expect people to write? I expect them to write that one. Maybe a few people to write that one. And, but at this point, you're just doing it for fun. You don't need to. Okay? All right, on 39. We need to get, like I said, we had to get rid of the negative to get the exponential alone. Well, the exponential is not alone. I've got 2 to the k plus 1.3, but I've got a negative 3 times in the front. So when you're multiplying by negative 3, we need to go ahead and divide by negative 3. Okay. So I've got 2 to the k plus 1.3 equals positive 6. I need to undo the, the uh, exponential, so I'm going to go ahead and convert it to a log. Log base 2 of 6 equals k plus 1.3. I'm trying to solve for k, so I'm going to subtract 1.3. So log base 2 of 6 minus 1.3 equals k. If you want to be more clear about where the log starts and stops, you can just put your parentheses around the 6 and follow through but not necessary. Okay, on 40, we need to, again, get the exponential alone. Right now I'm subtracting 6.4 from it, so I'm going to go ahead and add 6.4 to both sides. So 12 to the n minus 6 equals 19.4. I've got an exponential equal to a number, so I'm going to convert to a log. Log base 12 of 19.4 equals n minus 6. And we're in the same situation as we were a second ago. We need to get the variable alone, so we just move this number on the outside. We add it. So when you add it, you get log base 12 of 19.4 plus 6. And there you go. Okay. On 41, we need to get the exponential alone because the variable is up in the exponent, up in the power of the exponent. So, up in the power of the exponential e. Let's subtract 7. So I've got 4e to the a minus 1 equals 47. And remember, we don't have a calculator, so we're probably going to leave things in, in weird expressions, and that's okay. Um, I'm multiplying by 4, and I need to get, undo that, so I divide by 4. So e to the a minus 1 equals 47 fourths. If you had a calculator, you might say 11.75, but we don't have one, so we just leave it. I want to undo the e, and the opposite of the e is the natural log. So we take the natural log of both sides, and I'm left with a minus 1 equals the natural log of 47 fourths. Yeah? And then I need to solve for a, so I just add 1. a equals the natural log of 47 fourths plus 1. 
and there's my answer. Okay? So solving exponential equations is a lot of getting the exponent alone and converting or rewriting the exponents in terms of the same base and just simplifying with the powers, solving the equations with the powers represented. Okay? All right. So now let's start solving a lot of the equations. We put a lot on there so that you would have plenty to practice from and plenty to see. Okay? Because if you just saw a couple of situations, then it would be a little bit more difficult. If you have log equal to a number, you almost always want to convert to an exponential. So the base of the log is 3, so it's the base of the exponent. It's not 3 to the 2x. It's 3 to the 5th equals 2x. 3 to the 5th, which you don't have to necessarily simplify, but I would, I mean, it's pretty easy. you got a power chart. 3 to the 5th is 243, and then you want to solve for x, so divide by 2. So x equals 243 divided by 2. Okay. On 43, log base 2 of m minus 4 equals log base 2 of 5m plus 4. If you have one log equal to another log, then the log part is already equivalent. The only thing you have to remember is that, and, and I should have talked about that with here, you cannot have log of a negative number. You can have negative solutions, but when you plug them back in, you have to make sure that you have a positive number inside your logarithm. So, log of this equals log of that only if this equals that. So I'm just going to write m minus 4 equals 5m plus 4, and I'm going to start solving. So I'm going to minus m, and I'm going to minus 4. So that's gone, that's gone. I'm left with a negative 8 equals 4m. You want to solve for m by dividing by negative 4. Positive 4, I don't know why I changed the sign. So m equals a negative 2. Every time you solve a log equation, you really should check it. And if you forget halfway through the test, or you, rem you remember halfway through the test, then go back and check, okay? It's definitely worth it. I plug in a negative 2. What's a negative 2 minus 4? It's a negative 6. That's the log of a negative number, which means that's not my solution. It was my only one, which means I have no solution. Okay? All right. Same deal on number 44. I've got log of this equals log of that. And that's only true if the logs cancel each other out. So we're going to set v squared plus 2 equal to v plus 2 and start solving that equation. So if you've got a quadratic term, a linear term, and a constant, whether or not the constant stay, if you have a quadratic and a linear, then it's a quadratic equation, which you need to get everything on the same side and think about factoring. Okay? So I do want to subtract the v over and subtract the 2. Subtract the v and subtract the 2. The 2's actually cancel out, and I'm left with v squared minus v equals 0. And though it's not a quadratic with a linear constant and quadratic, it is a quadratic in that, that I'm going to factor, in that I can factor out a common factor. They both have a v in them, so if I factor out a v, I'm left with 1v minus, and I'm left with 1 right there. Okay? So when does this equal 0? Well, this equals 0 anytime v equals 0, because 0 times anything is 0. And then when v equals positive 1, because 1 minus 1. If I plug in 0, I get 0 squared plus 2, which is positive. 0 plus 2 is positive. If I plug in 1, I get 1 squared plus 2 is positive. 1 plus 2 is positive. So they're both my solutions. Okay? All right, on 45, I have log equal to a log again. So log of this equals log of that, only if this equals that. I have n squared minus 17 equals negative 6n minus 1. And that is a quadratic, a linear, and a constant term. More than one constant. So I'm going to get everything on the same side. So I'm going to add, and I want to move it to the side with the n squared, because that makes it easier. I'm going to add 6n and add 1. So I'm left with n squared plus 6n minus 16 equals 0. Now that is a classic quadratic that we just factor. Factors of negative 16 that add up to 6, positive 8, negative 2. So we say n plus 8, n minus 2 equals 0. And that equals 0 when n equals a negative 8 and a positive 2. 
you always have to check your answer. So if I think about negative 8 squared, negative 8 squared is a positive 64, and 64 minus 17 is a positive number, so that's fine. Negative 8 times negative 6 is a positive 48, and a positive 48 minus 1 is positive. So negative 8 is actually the answer, or a answer. I don't know if it's the answer. We'll check. If I plug in 2, it's 2, two squared is 4. 4 minus 17 is actually a negative number, and the, f and the first time you get log of a negative number, you know it's not the solution. So the only answer is negative 8. Okay? Alright, um, on this one, you have two logarithms on the left-hand side, and then you have um, equals 2. You cannot cancel these logs out, okay? You can only cancel out logarithms out if there is a log equal to another log, and then they don't matter. But, at the same time, um, when you've got log minus another log, you, you still have to deal with them. And you still want to only have one log on each side if there is a log. So what you want to do is you want to combine them. And the quotient property says if two logs are separated by subtraction, then I can combine them using division into one logarithm. So log base 9 of x squared minus 9 divided by 7. And we set that equal to 2. Now, if you have log equal to a number, you should always then think, okay, the opposite of the log is the exponential, so it's to convert to an exponential. 9 squared, base of the log is base of the exponent to the second, equals x squared minus 9 over 7. So we're trying to solve, and 9 is 81. 9 squared is 81, I should say. So I've got 81 equals x squared minus 9 over 7. I'm dividing by 7 right now, and I want to undo that division, so I multiply by 7. So multiply by 7 on both sides. 7 times 1 is 7, and 7 times 8 is 56. So 567 equals x squared minus 9. I'm going to add 9, and I get 570. 4 equals x squared, 74, 76, equals x squared. I want to solve for x by getting rid of the square, and so I just take the square root of both sides. And when you take the square root, there's actually two answers. You should always check. If you don't know for sure, check. The square root of 576 is actually 24, so x equals positive and negative 24. And let's check and see if this work. The only x I see in my equation is being squared, and both a positive and a negative 24 squared is a positive 576, and minus 9, that's positive. So we are, in fact, both solutions. Okay. On 47, I have a log. I have plus 9, and then I have equals 8. If you can get log equal to a number, then you can convert. I have log plus a number equals 8. So I want to go ahead and get the log by itself. So I'm going to subtract 9. Log base 6 of x minus 10 equals a negative 1. I have a log equal to a number, so I want to convert to an exponential. 6 to the negative 1 equals x minus 10. I don't want negative, is negative, ans negative powers in your answer, so I think that you should rewrite this as 1 6th let me back down, equals x minus 10, but we're going to add the 10 over. And technically, you should go ahead and say, well, that's 10 over 1, common denominator is 6, so that's 66, 1 6 plus 66 equals 61 6. I don't think Mr. Hines will count you off if you don't do that, and I probably won't, but... It would be nice if you find the right in that final form. Okay. On 48. 48. That negative 5 in this is not the logarithm. Um, I need to get the log by itself. And right now it's being multiplied by 7. You could bring the 7 back as a power of 7. But we don't want to do that. What I'd rather do is just get rid of it. You're multiplying by 7, the opposite would be to divide by 7. So I've got log base 8 of negative 5n, and that equals 1, because 7 divided by 7 is 1. 
Um, I have a log equal to number, so I'm going to convert. 8 to the first power, which is just 8, equals negative 5n. And, oh, okay, just right quick, I didn't actually check this answer. 61 sixth minus 10. Well, I know that 61 sixth is 10 plus 1 sixth, right? So 10 plus 1 sixth minus 10 is a positive 1 sixth, which is a solution because it's got, uh, it's log of a positive. Okay. Anyway, back to this problem. Um, I'm multiplying by 5n, negative 5n, so negative 5. So I'm going to divide by a negative 5 on both sides. Don't leave the negative down there. And you've got negative 8 this is n. And that is your solution. Um, it is a negative solution, but if I plug it back in, I get a negative 5 times a negative 8 this. And when you uh, multiply a negative times a negative, you get a positive, log of a positive, and it works. Okay. On this one, I've got two logarithms separated by addition equal to 1. What I want to do is I want to combine these two logarithms separated by addition using multiplication, the product property. So this is actually log of x minus 2 times x plus 1. Only one logarithm equals 1. Now, distributing this out gives you x squared minus 2x plus x, um, or plus 1x minus 2x minus 2, which leaves you with log of x squared minus x minus 2. This is an understood base 10. I'm going to go ahead and write that in there. And when you have an understood, um, or when you have a log equal to a number, you go ahead and raise the base, convert to an exponential. 10 to the 1 equals x squared minus x minus 2. Remember, this is a quadratic equation with a quadratic and a linear term and a constant. So you want to get everything on the same side as the quadratic. So I'm going to minus 10 over. x squared minus x minus 12 equals 0. The factors of negative 12 that add up to negative 1 are negative 4 and positive 3. And that means my solutions are a positive 4 and a negative 3. And if I plug those back in, 4 minus 2 is positive, and 4 plus 1 is positive. Negative 3 minus 2 is negative, which means negative 3 is not a solution. And then x equals 4. Okay. On 50. 50 is one that, if you really thought about the problem before you started working it, you could go ahead and know the answer, but we're going to go ahead and work it out. If you have natural log of this equals natural log of that, then the natural logs, just like logarithm, I mean, it's just another logarithm, can, uh, don't matter in the solving. I mean, they matter in the, in the final solution, as far as, like, you can have log of a negative number, but when you're solving, you can just say the logs go away. So I'm really dealing with negative 2v squared equals 81 minus 3v squared. I want the, the variable to be positive, so I'm actually going to add 3v squared to this one. And that leaves me with v squared equals 81. If I take the square root and do plus and minus, then I've got v equals plus and minus 9. So then we check. And if I plug in negative or positive 9 first, 9 squared is 81, and negative 2 times 81 is a negative 162, which I can't have a negative inside a log, so the positive is out. But so is the negative, because a negative 9 squared is a positive 81 as well, and a positive 81 times negative 2 is still negative. So that means there is no solution. So like I said, looking at this, I could kind of tell that there's going to be no solution, because v squared is always positive, and if you multiply it by negative 2, it's always negative, and natural log of a negative does not exist. And the reason I keep saying that is just remember, log is the inverse of the exponential exponential functions never equal anything less than zero, so they're negative, they're never negative. And for that reason, the inverse, logarithms, never exist when x equals negative. Okay, so it's just the, the opposite. The y values of exponential never equal, never, are ne never negative. The x values of logs are never negative. And, I mean, unless there's a transformation. Like, you can transform a log, but when you plug the negative number in, you get a positive, okay? So it's log of a positive number. I'm not, 
even when it's down there, it's still going to be log of a positive number. It just gives you a negative solution. Okay, back to this. I have 2 minus 10 natural log of r plus 3 equals negative 18. I need to get the natural log by itself, so I'm going to subtract the 2 from both sides. And that leaves me with negative 10 natural log of r plus 3 equals negative 20. I want to get the natural log by itself still, so I'm going to divide by that thing I'm multiplying by, negative 10. So I'm left with natural log of r plus 3 equals 2. Um, I want to undo the operation of the natural log, and the opposite of the natural log is the exponential e. So I'm going to raise both sides as a power of e, and those cancel each other out. r plus 3 equals e squared. And again, I want to solve for the variable, so I'm going to subtract 3 over r equals e squared minus 3. And there's my answer. Now, right here, when you got to this right here, you could have said natural log of r plus 3 equals 2. If you remember that natural log is actually log base e, then you could just convert to an exponential. e to the second equals r plus 3, and you end up with the same thing that we just ended up with, r plus 3 equals e squared. Okay? So if you want to just use the fact that natural log is log base e, it's perfectly fine. Okay, on number 52, again, we need to get the natural log by itself. So I'm going to add this 4. I'm going to left with 4 ln of 3b equals 0. At that point, I want to get the natural log by itself, so I'm going to divide by 4. And the natural log of 3b, 0 divided by 4 is 0. And I want to get rid of the natural log, so I raise it as a power of e. So 3b equals e to the 0, and any number other than 0 raised to the 0 is 1. Your power chart, if you see at the top, all those numbers raised to the 0 is 1. And e is just a number 2.71828, it's between 2 and 3. Raised to 0 is 1. So I want to solve, divide by 3, and I got it, e equals 1 third. When I plug in one-third, I do not get a negative number, which means it does work. I didn't actually check this one up here. e squared minus 3, if you plug that in, e squared minus 3 plus 3 is just e squared inside. And natural log of e squared is a positive number. In fact, it's 2. Because natural log of e squared and the natural log of e cancel each other out. Okay. On 53. You've got two logarithms, they're natural logs, but who really cares, so two logarithms separated by addition. And you cannot do this, because I see a lot of people doing this, I'm going to write it over here. You cannot in any way, or ever, do this. Okay? That'd be equivalent to you just saying, I can cancel out the logarithms because I just want to. You can't. You can only apply an operation to both sides of an equation. So you, if you did e to all of this equals e to that, then you could still work with it, but we haven't really talked about that. So it's easiest to first combine the logarithms. Two logarithms separated by addition can be combined using multiplication. So that's negative 4x times 2 is negative 8x equals the natural log of 26. You can consider just canceling out the e's, you can, or the, the natural logs, or you can just raise as a power of e. Either way, they're gone. Negative 8x equals 26. Divide by negative 8. And simplify. x equals a negative 13 fourths. Now i got to check it first. If I plug in a negative 13 fourths, the only x I see is right here, and it's multiplied by a negative 4, so negative times negative is a positive, so it works. I actually wrote down here because when you're solving with a calculator, this is not, this is not a bad problem. Um, it's a little ugly, but it's not bad. Without a calculator, it's, it's pretty ugly. So we're just going to not worry about it for this test. And that goes for me and Mr. Holmes. Okay, on this one, I have two logarithms separated by subtraction. And I want to combine them so that I can have one natural log equals another, cancel them out. So natural log separated by subtraction can be combined using division. 4x squared minus 8 over 8. 
equals the natural log of 17. Uh, if I take the e of both, raise both sides to the power of e, or just cancel them, it doesn't really matter. Um, then I've got 4x squared minus 8 over 8 equals 17. I want to undo the division of 8, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 8. Okay, so I've got 4x squared minus 8 equals, and remember, you don't have a calculator, so if you have to go out to the side and multiply 17 times 8, then do it. 7 times 8 is 56. 8 times 1 is 8, plus 5 is 13, so 136. Or think of it as 10 plus 7 times 8. That's 80 plus 56, which is 136. However you do it, tally marks on the page, do whatever you got to do. Except for cheap. All right, so I want to solve for 4x squared. I'm going to add 8 to both sides, and I'm left with 144. 144 divided by 4, you can do it a couple different ways. You can actually just work it out long division style. 4 goes into 14 3 times. times 4 times 3 is 12. Subtract them. Bring on the 2. Bring on the 4. 4 goes into 24 6 times. Or you could break 144 down into factors. 144 is 12 times 12. 12 is 3 times 4 times 12, which means it is 4 times 36. So when you divide by 4, you're left with 36. I want to solve for x. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And when you take the square root, you got two answers. x equals plus and minus 6. You should check them. The only x I see is being squared. So positive 6 squared is, is a 36 times 4, which is positive minus 8. And that's still positive. And a negative 6 squared is going to give me the same thing. So those are both my answers. OK. Hope this helped, and if you still need have some questions, then feel free to come in in the morning and before the tests and ask us, okay? All right.